What's up everyone, this is Cher talking, welcome back to my channel, in today's video we'll be discussing news for months in Saga Universe. We just got the announcement of two different dinners, the first one in the top brings matchwork number 4 alongside other units, they are very powerful, and then the one in the bottom, it's a rerun banner that brings matchwork number 3 alongside 4 other old units. Well, matchwork number 3 is very nice because she buffs 4 different status, love, Charisma, Will, and Dexterity. That means that you will heal better, receive less damage from magical attacks, sustain against status elements, and increase damage of Dexterity based weapons. This becomes very important when using Tigers in formation to resist many boss fights. She may even be more important than Matriarch number 4 because of being of peace. Now, there's also Fornius, a farming unit that's pretty powerful because he can attack with three different elementals there is also yundin this one is very relevant she has ring of life an aoe spell that revives and heals everyone to max hp and can debuff dexterity uh, then there is boston this guy here is not the best version of boston we just got one with counter mechanics that's pretty powerful but this one has a passive that can trigger agility buff and that's good but also brings an aoe opener for the current one there is also Ferdinand, this character here is not so relevant anymore. He just has an attack that can hit between two to four times, but he does not self-buff. Exactly just lost in the sea of slash damage dealers. But the first one here, the prize is Mantra. Then you can summon for either Yunzin and for news if you are missing out on what they offer. Last, we have Boston and Ferdinand. Now, we need to discuss... Matchwork number four. She got buffed alongside all the units from this banner. They are buffing all styles, even through they just released Leon's banner out of order. And this banner is also out of order. They want to just make it then even more appealing. It's good because, to be honest, you don't need to summon on every banner. Just have to see if they offer what you're lacking. And if you cannot get them now, wait for a rerun. If they are still relevant, it's okay. If not, you just get replacements. But they knew that some of the styles needed some extra um, help to make them viable for long term, and they will be because of what they did. Let's talk about it. Well, I just opened it now on my Saga website and be clicking on this version of Matriarch. There's yet another one in the future. This one can buff and debuff on the same time with a very costly skill, but it's pretty relevant in the meta for JP. This one had some problems. She got released on JP when we were getting the Global X and Press, and they did a very interesting support skill that was actually inferior to the Global X and Press version. This one is a 5 VP skill that spends also 2 LP, it's fast and will give 1 evasion to everyone in the squad. But for only one time. So if the enemy attack at 3 times, it will break in the first hit and then you start taking damage. Because of that 2 LP cost, it was too much. So they knew that this was not so good and in global they added a heal. Uh, heal with medium power that will give you around 1.2 thousand or more when healing, getting most people to full HP. So this does not revive people around, but just made this skill much better than it was in JP. She also has an attack called a Twin Penetrate that is a fast attack with Pierce and Lightning, and it was not so powerful, so they buff it up to a power. We just don't know the mod, but it's already an improvement. So those two skills got better and made her overall better for farming and utility and there is also this thing she starts with 12 vp so you can use shining glory from her udx style twice allowing her to stay on the meta for farming since she also buffs and heals and uh, they also changed her third ability it's now only 20 percent increase in damage but she gets a 30 percent uh, decrease in the damage that she receives so she can survive better she already has this uh, Song of Hope that decreases damage by 5%, so equals 35, very close to Iron Wall that is 40%, so will sustain much better and be a very useful style. If you miss it out on UDX, you can also heal with the second one. In long fights, this is going to be good. You just need the third version and the fourth one for most of the content now. The first matchwork is still pretty relevant for evasion and for damage dealers, but the Tiger's Den domination for very hard challenges makes the third one more interesting. 
So uh, the next character, let's talk about Leonid. Leonid got a buff to some of his attacks. It's the last version of Leonid, and it's actually pretty, pretty powerful. He does have good status distribution. They also buffed his status, just like it for Mantrak. She's going to receive higher STR and even resistance status. Leonid has very cheap attacks. His attack here, number one, it's only one BP for an AoE attack. This is something that will start appearing, but much more in the future. His second attack got buffed to triple S. Uh, this one was already pretty close to triple S, so the increase we uh, may be small or great, I don't know. And the third attack is also 9 BP close for a power. They did this because martial arts units don't scale so well in formations like other type of attackers, so this makes him uh, perform better. This Leonid has a very interesting design. He loses 10% of his HP every turn, but gets 40% increase in damage. And when he attacks, he's just gonna chase with this attack called Slight Hand. And it's a single target attack that recovers his HP and tries to debuff the enemy's dex rate. And after that, he recovers a little, trying to get back to full HP. The next turn, he loses again and keeps the chase going. But the most interesting thing is that every time that he attacks, he has a chance to recover BP for everyone. The chance is 25%. Now they added something else. You get one more BP to yourself. So it's actually two BP to him and one BP to everyone. And since he has a chase, you have actually two chances of triggering this. It's a character that will work well in some interesting setups that you need more BP to use stronger attacks. Now we can talk about Olosis. This guy here is very similar to Bertrand. He got an increase to his STR and he gets his attack called Grand Trample. That's similar to Spinning Trample, just a little stronger, doing Pierce and Blunt. It's very easy to find Slash, so that's why this is so good. And it costs 8 BP, and if he kills targets, he gets 4 BP back. So he can keep using this similarly to Bertrand with his skills, but he does not need Inheritance. He just goes and uses this Grand Trample, kills, and do it again. They also buffed his Burning Hound to triple S damage, meaning that he does have a single target option to try to do the same, it's just that it's harder to find events where there's only one enemy and he can do the finishing attack. None of these attacks are fast, so you have to place him on Amazon Red Axe formation and try to use fast attackers in the back so that they help him finish the enemies. Also, uh, this attack here called Shock will help you if you don't kill, so you at least can do a uh, cheaper AoE on the next turn. So that's a very interesting design, people still use this guy on JP because of having so many good passives, the damage is pretty high, if he keeps killing, he just replaces one of your damage dealers and you can bring more trainees in the fight. He does not really need inheritance from his UDX style, just adds more into his gameplay. And the last one is Anus, and this guy was also buffed. He is an X user with Far Element. There is another version of his UDX that has an interesting skill called Ablation Dance that increases slash and heat damage to the squad, but this one is not an definitive version since they also choose to buff his STR. He can use anything he wants from inheritance. He's a column attacker with burn size. In global, this was changed for fast, so he's gonna be amazing for farming column aligned enemies. He opens with a deep power attack that's both slash and heat, and then he uses air slash with the same power. So it's a double attack for only 5 BP cost. It's gonna be amazing for farming when you really need. Uh, then he has a support skill called Fire Bearer uses 9 BP and 1 LP and gives a shield that negates all types of heat damage while also recovering HP on the end of turn for the whole squad. In JP this is already good, but in global they just made it even better. It lasts for 3 turns now, so 3 turns of heal. If you are using people like Matchwork number 3 that buffs love and charisma, the heal will increase. And don't forget the heat negation. He can use this again in 3 turns, so it means that it's full negation, while in JP they had a 1 turn where you could not have this active because of the BP cost. So they fix it here. He also counters heat attacks. He's also a character that buffs heat damage to the squad while still having good damage. So this better is pretty interesting, guys. He will receive a good award, I can already say that, because these characters have interesting designs, they work differently, they offer a lot without clashing, so they just do different stuff. So there's a lot of value to get here, the matchwork is always good. If you have the UDX matchwork, you can just go for double shining glory, this is gonna be amazing for farming. 
but I'll be making a review of them tomorrow, so stay tuned into the channel and check it up later. But that is it for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you soon in the next video. Bye.